Hey everyone, Matt Nobe here. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the details on how to use and set up the interactive portraits extension. So most of the features with this extension will work just fine out of box, like the um, you know the uh, the effects and the health tracking. Uh, you don't have to do anything special for that. However, if you want to use the feature that will auto switch the portraits for you, like when you apply like different effects to the characters. Uh, you will need to do some specific naming of your files. Now, the rules for this I've included in the README file, but just to make it extra clear, and it's because it's really important you follow these and read these setup instructions, I'm going to go over it in this video. So first of all, um, the main thing we're going to be focusing on is your portraits folder inside of the Fantasy Grounds folder. So you need to find this folder, and this is where your portrait images should be stored. Now, it's very important that your portrait image has to exactly match your character's name on the character sheet. Capitalization is important. Okay, so that's rule number one. Rule number two, if you want to use the auto switching so that it switches the image on effect change like I just did, you need to name your file. Oops, let me get that back up. You need to name your file in a certain format where you have the character's name, underscore, and then the effect label exactly as you want to spell the effect. So here you see I have DRTZ underscore hidden right? because the effect that I applied has a capital H-I-D-D-E-N before the uh, semicolon there. So it has to match exactly that. If there's no semicolon, if it's just like deafened or something else, um, you can do that too. But uh, if you have a, like a complex effect like this, it has to exactly match case specific that and uh, beginning label, and it has to have a character name in front of it and an underscore. So I've got the formula here in the reading file to read if you have any questions and a couple examples. Okay, and then the next rule is uh, all portraits that you intend to use. Not, they have to be not just in your own portrait file, but the DM has to have them as well. So you need to make sure that any files you're trying to use for auto switching, the DM has them in uh, his or her portraits folder as well. And if you still are seeing issues for some people, I, I didn't get a chance to fully test this, but uh, you may actually just want to copy those images to all players. So all players have the same image files named the same way uh, in their portraits folder. That should guarantee there's no... Uh, hiccups there. And lastly, all these file naming and file organization things have to be done before you launch Fantasy Grounds. So if you realize after you launch the game that, oh, your file was named wrong, uh, you can't just change name the file. You have to actually you know, make the name change and then give it to everybody the right file and then load Fantasy Grounds again. Now, if you follow those rules, it should work fine. You should be able to do all the auto switching. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to change it very often, but if you do decide to do between sessions, you want to add a new image or you want to have an image for a new kind of condition, uh, then you just can make sure you use those rules and you make sure everyone has the same image files available to them. And just to, to clarify to how you use these, again, it's basically just any effect you want, no matter what the effect is or what it does, all this extension is paying attention to is, is there something on this character with a label? that has a matching image with that character's name and that label name. So no matter what it is, like even this big one here, this uh, wild shape effect, um, you know, that's all fine. What I did, you know, what you can do is if you're using Rob Tui extension or Diablo Bobs, you can just um, look at the naming for those effects and just make your file name match. So for example, um, uh, let's see, well, I'll just show you how I did it for Rage. You know, I searched for the Rage, and I dragged it onto the character sheet. Let me open that character. And just like, you know, with any action you already have on your, you probably already have it on your sheet, right? You should just look at what the effects are that you have in your sheet, and what is the label of that effect, Rage. So, you know, if you want to have a special portrait for this effect, whatever it is on your sheet, you just go make, find that image, add it to your portraits file, name it, your character name, underscore, and then whatever this label is here, and that's all you need to do. Uh, and the way I made it work with the wild shape is, uh, like if you're using uh, one-click Druid, 
normally these effects all just say wild shape regardless of what animal it is. So if you just want to, uh, you know, you could have 